They haven't asked. They haven't asked me. No, you you do it. You want to get out of it? I just, I I am yeah. Please, because I have tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday morning, and Saturday night. So if you give me, a, they're gonna get tired of me. <laughs> well, hello everybody. Hey, good to see you all here today. We had less uh, less people. I probably bored some to death last time, but I'm glad that we are here. Um, do you all have a good good uh, good week? I know that uh, some of, some people were traveling, so that's good, and some people were not traveling. So that's pretty much the divide the whole group. Uh, you know, one of the things about managing life, and remember, I'm not saying stress, it's managing life, is the, the, the fact that we need to learn to have a good sense of humor. Does that make sense? Um, we need to learn to laugh. Um, you you won't be you won't be uh, surprised if I tell you that there is uh, people with doctor's degree who is their therapy way of therapeutic mode is just laughter and joking, and I said, man, I miss the I got the wrong doctorate <laughs> because that's what they do. I, I I've been to seminars when they talk about sense of humor and the endorphins and all the 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 the, the how they the body adjusts to laughter, and um, it's, it's, it's good to, to understand that sometimes we have to reframe. Have you, have you heard that, that expression, reframe life? If life gives you lemons, you reframe it and you make lemonade. That's, that's how you do it. And um, there are times that you have to listen uh, and be and be kind and be serious, but there are times that you have to think about something that is jovial and light. Because if you think about everything seriously and you have to go like this all the time, you're going to get more wrinkles at the end. So this is a good. Uh, beauty, beauty tip from the pastor. So smile more. By the way, when you smile, your muscles are more relaxed. When you get like, then your muscles are tense and they tend to create more markings in your face. So, okay. So uh, let's do a little more smiling. And they said they... they the joyful heart is a good what? Good medicine. So if you're sick, ha, 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 ha. Let's pray. We have met, we are meeting here, Lord, today and praying for your spirit to, to speak to us. And uh, help us today to learn about how to manage life. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a little... Do we have whistling, a little whistling? Or is me? Do you, you hear it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, there is a feedback somewhere that I can hear it. Um, can you lower this a little bit? Are you doing that as I speak? Okay. Uh, and I need to word this so they can hear me. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many of you did your paper of events? You did it? Okay. You did it? And uh, should we just have a clinic? Because everybody's high? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to share your numbers or no? 
So he's lower. Good. Good. That's good. Did you do yours? Okay. What, what, were you scared by it? Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, some of us have had incidents in the past that are counting in the chart. And that is only good if you have kept the pattern. Okay? Like, for example, may I use your, ex your example? Can I use you? As an example, he had a very high, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Uh, but there are things, I saw his paper, and there were some things that he experienced way in the past. And, um, but he put it there. So in general, even if you minimize his situation, he still have a high rec or a high number because he just lost his wife, and um, and uh, yeah, he had death and loss in his family. So um, all that in itself is a hundred points, in the top. Um, so uh, he he will have a high a high number. Did you do yours? And how is it? All right. That's not too, not too bad. No, no. By the way, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, should I go here and on the, on the, on the arrows? Come on. It's not doing it. Oh, I need to turn it on. Come on, Jose. Shh. No, it's on. Okay. Last last week, I forgot to to tell you about. I did talk about um, depression, the stress, distress, and depression. But this is the healthy stress, the you stress. I was typing this morning, and I said, I forgot to tell them about the you stress. You stress is a healthy one. It's the healthy stress that you receive when you become a grandma. And you can always return the baby back. You know, you say, oh, here. Um, when, and by the way, becoming a grandma, becoming a grandpa, becoming uh, an in, in law or part of another family is stressful because it brings adjustment. Everything that you have to adjust to do. And if you think being a grandparent doesn't have stress, you have to think about the time when you want to do something and you see your grand, your, your, your kids doing something, or your daughter or your son, and you go like, I don't want to tell them. But you, because that's, that's not the way you do it according to your book and um, so it's, it's interesting it's just interesting so we react to our environment there are healthy reactions it's called you stress or healthy stress the distress is the negative stress and depression is out of the charts when it gets really 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 bad um, so we we stop and this, and I wanted to talk to you about unhealthy ways of coping with the stress. When you feel stress, some people smoke, drink, and did we, we did cover this last time. People smoke, drink. Uh, shouldn't be too much. It should be drink. Uh, overeating and undereating. Uh, not every manifestation of high stress is eating too much. Some people don't eat. They, some people start using bulimia and start, uh, or, or uh, start vomiting and start doing other crazy stuff due to stress. Um, 
So it's very important that, that, that we pay attention to all those changes. Uh, zoning out in front of the TV or the computer for hours. You go like, what are you watching? I don't know. <laughs> and they watch three or three or four channels at the same time. You go back and forth. Uh, if you do it for a long time or not just because you're tired for a period of time, uh, it could be that you are actually trying to escape the, the, the ex exposure to the stress. Um, drawing or withdrawing from friends, family, and activities. That means you don't do anything. You just, what they call it, vegetate. You sit down and you, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to hear anything. I don't, want, I don't want nobody to talk to me about nothing. Uh, using pills and drugs to relax. The famous sleeping pills. And some people go, they don't want to ask the doctor, so they use other stuff. Um, they can be addictive like cough syrup or, or uh, pills for other things that will cause sleeping. Or they buy, they, now I have found that people buy Tylenol PM because it looks more like a Tylenol bottle. And they don't want people to know that they're using sleeping pills. So they, they use that. Uh, if you're asleep, is disturbed, needs to be addressed. It's not light. Because if you don't sleep well, how is your next day? Bad. And the next, and the, by the way, you cannot recuperate. If you lost a night, you say, oh, I'll catch up tomorrow, or I'll catch up. Well, you can, you can catch up energy-wise, but the, the benefit of the sleeping part is not something that you catch up. You'll, you'll, get, you'll get the effects of that. Um, Procrastinating, I'll do it tomorrow, mañana. I'll do it mañana. And everything is mañana, and then mañana when it comes, it comes with a big bill. And then you go like, ah, I have to do it. Uh, it's better to do it, for example, you, you can call this compulsive behavior. But when I get a, a mail, I mail, I sit down and I process my mail. I open it, and I said, I need to touch things only once. If I had to touch it twice, my management is not right. So I take it, I open it. Sometimes I cut it, sometimes I put my finger through it and and break it, and uh, I say, okay, this is garbage. So I put it in the circle file, and this is good, and then I put that in some, uh, whatever I need to do with it. Uh, if I need to pay, and I have the money, even if it's for another day to be sent, I write the check, put it in there, and then I put it in a place but it's for future mailing, like in two weeks or in one week, when I touch it once, and I'm done with it. And every morning I look for the mail that's going for that day. It's kind of compulsive, but that's how I go. I, this is for today. And I take it, and I mail it, uh, and then I move the other ones to the same spot, so I always look for that mail as I go in that day. Uh, filling up every minute of the day to avoid facing problems. I told you last time that this is one of my problems. I get really busy. Sometimes I fill the time. Sometimes some other people fill my time. Okay, this is, we didn't talk about it. Anxiety and anxious personality. The drama queen. Have you heard about these people? That makes everything a big thing and they are pretty much actors. And um, we, we, this is from the last week's topic, but this, there are some people who are drama kings or drama queens. They make everything a big deal. People with this anxious personality, what they do is call the attention to themselves. 
Everything has to be me. You know, and they will work around mm, making the people around feel bad. They will do the, the acting to dump the guilt on some of the other people. Now, we have the other personality, anxiety, anxious personality, which is the worry war. Tomorrow, what will happen tomorrow? What I'm going to do tomorrow? What about if, when I retire? I'm going to be with no work. What am I going to do? And he's probably 50. You know, they're always thinking about the future and what they're going to do. But they don't do any plan for the problem. Because seeing ahead what is going to happen is not bad. If you are looking for solutions and you exercise a plan to solve it. Does that make sense? You know, but only to worry for worry's sake and just to verbalize and to start the conversation with other people about your worries, you know, because what happened if I worry today about tomorrow? What happened? And you lose the ability to enjoy the day when you can enjoy today. And the good Lord said, tomorrow will be tomorrow, and you deal with tomorrow when it comes, you know. And planning is not bad. Worrying about it is the problem. Okay? Uh, little Miss and Mr. Perfection. Do you know them? Yeah. And, and the, everything has to be perfect. Huh? Yeah. Um... I, I, I was raised by somebody that was a perfectionist till one day he told me, rake the leaf of this tree and do not leave any leaves that have to be picked up. In the fall, leaves tend to fall. And when you finish, you go and throw away the, the, the leaf, and then you come back, there's more leaf. So I pick up the other leaf, and I took it, and I came back, and I said, where's the more leaf? So I look at the tree, and I said, you're going to get me in trouble with that. So I went and climbed the tree and took all the leaves out. Well, I got, I got into it. I got a spanking for overdoing my job. You told me not to leave any leaf. How in the world are you going to figure out that I was going to do that? This tree kept throwing their leaf out. So I did what you told me. No leaves. Now, here, there's no leaves. I mean, my dad was a perfectionist. And he was good for his job because he was a contractor. So inches and centimeters and all that was important. But I wasn't, I wasn't a perfecter. I was more of a joker, but he didn't like my joke. Uh, hyperactive and overachiever, people who are always on the move. By the way, these are uh, anxious, anxious personality, people who are always thinking about themselves. They're looking at them. Uh, before I got here, I got a call from uh, somebody in the military who is in an exercise, and he said, I cannot stay put. I had to do this. I can be doing so much at home, and they put us in lockdown, and I'm just eating up myself. And I said, what can you do? He's taking some classes. I said, what can you do? You had your books? Yeah. Have you done any book work? No. Can you do book work? Yeah. Well, start working. And then he called me. He called me early, and he called me in the evening. Uh, he said, "I was able to do 
a one term paper, one, one report. And I said, you feel good? Yeah. So, so, so being, feel like you're in a cage creates anxiety. And there are people who live that way. Uh, can you relate to any of these? You don't have to tell me. It's private. It's between you and the, and the screen. But uh, it's very, we all have a little of each sometimes. Uh, this is the Taipei. They, they, he's going to climb the, the, the mountain because the mountain is there. And mountains are they made to climb. And this is me. I'm going to just use you as a backdrop because it, you're there. Taipei is just relaxed. And sometimes I'm a A, and sometimes I'm a B. I'm a B. Uh, uh, type A personality is characteristic by the constant feeling of working against the clock and, and a strong sense of comp being competitive. Uh, individuals with type A personality generally experience higher stress level, uh, hate failure, and find it difficult to stop working. That is what happens when you are facing retirement and you are dreaming about retirement. And then when you retire, the first week is great. The second week you're ready to head back to work. Because you say, I don't know what to do. Huh? Oh, there you go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, then, this is what I'm finding about people who are retired. Then you meet them like two or three months after all that, and they go like, now I'm so busy that I didn't know it was that bad. They get really busy doing things. So, um, um, this is the, the five type of personality traits, and I'm just going to go really fast. Actually, I'm just going to skip this. A stress management deals with the balance between personality and exposure. Everybody here has a different personality. How we expose that personality in our stress experience is what makes it healthy or unhealthy, how we manifest our personality traits. So you cannot say to you to be like him or to be like her and to be because everybody will manifest what they're experiencing in a different way. Does that make sense? But when we are doing that, we need to find ways that are healthy. Healthy means I will peak, but I can come down. Because if you hope, you, exp you want to live life without never peaking or never going into the distress sphere, you are not going to make it. Do you think Christ, when he went to the temple and saw all these people uh, selling stuff there, he got the robe, made it into a, a, a what do they call it, a, something to hit the people? Yeah, whip. He was relaxed? No. But he was able to come down from there and go back to being okay. So there are times we're going to peak. Okay? Uh, this is our today's presentation. Uh, it, it has to do with the effects of stress in the body, especially in the brain. Uh, we think that this, the, this, this the stress or the distress do not affect the body. Affects everything. From the head to the toes. You have the brain, and the brain uh, deal with concentration. People will have headaches. I have a lady who is, uh, is calling me because she has a lot of headaches, migraine. And during, I said, let's wait till the school break to see if you have the headaches. She called me last Wednesday. I haven't had any headaches yet. 
And I said, oh, is that, so that has to do with the school. Do you like your job? Uh, do you have to work? Yeah. What would you do if you don't have to go to work? Oh, I'll be a nurse. Okay. So there's a sense of not fulfilling her, her dreams. And she's angry about the kids and all the kids. You know the kids get a little wild the day, the, the week before break. Because they're looking forward to that Friday when the bell rings and they go into a break. Well, she had to deal with the kids under those circumstances. And every time she's closer to a break, she goes into a headache. Uh, and she calls migraine and she goes to the doctor and of course they give him migraine medication when she needs that at that moment but she also needs to manage her stress okay uh, the heart uh, the immune system the joints uh, and the reason I'm saying this because we think of stress and and I'm repeating this because we as, as US people we talk about stress we don't understand stress, we don't take care of stress, and we just keep circling. It's like, how many conference, how many articles, how many Time articles in the Time magazine you have heard about stress, and people say, oh, and then they go keep doing the same thing. You know, and our typical U.S. lifestyle is really not helping us, it's killing more people than helping them. Is this making sense? Okay. This is our brain. Uh, your brain is not color that way. Uh, I, I wish some people would probably would like to color it that way. I can think of my daughter, my granddaughter. She likes to color. So uh, I'm going to talk today about the frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. And uh, the frontal lobe uh, is where we have the values, the principles, our uh, spirituality, our concept of good and bad is all in the frontal lobe. Okay? Um, it's midnight, and I'm hungry. And I want to eat something. But I know if I eat, I won't sleep. Because my digestion is going to start. And that's not good. You know who's telling you eating at midnight is not good? Your frontal lobe. He's saying, no, 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 no. You know who's telling you that to eat is needed? Your uh, hippocampus in the middle of the brain is telling you, you need to eat. And then you go like, ah, I went and I ate, and I didn't sleep. Because I was doing digestion. Well, our frontal lobes deal with principle, religion, our principle. What people who tell me that they're not religious is funny, because what they're saying is, we don't share the same morals when in reality, they do have morals. And they have principles who guide their life. All that is stored in the frontal lobe. You remember, the, and, and I'm going to appeal now to the people who are Bible students. You remember when the, the priest had sanctity to the Lord or Jehovah in the front of his... Uh, that is a symbol that this is kind of the holy place of the brain. The frontal lobe is very important for us to keep that connected to the rest because this is the one has the stop button and it has the functional button to bring principles to guide our life. Uh, Peneus Gage, uh, I don't know if you have heard about him. Have you heard about this guy? This guy was a good guy and he works in the railroad and he was good husband and the community he was like 
and he had an accident. Uh, this rod that he's holding came through his head like that due to an explosion. It went like this. And they end up doing a lobotomy. This is the way it went. It went through his cheek and went through his brain and served and cut. They had this in Harbor in the Anatomical Museum in Harbor. Uh, and it's actually uh, messed up his frontal lobe connections. Okay? They use his, this situation to study the effect of the frontal lobe being compromised. His behavior changed. He became uh, a, a drunk. He, he, was, he started speaking in different tongues, like bad words. He wasn't that way. His behavior was really, really awkward. It was like a different person because his frontal lobe functions uh, were jeopardized. He didn't have them anymore. So he was actually working on the rest of the brain with no, with no controls established. And uh, you can still go to Harvard Anatomical Museum and see a picture. This is from there. And you can see also uh, they did a cast of his uh, brain, of his uh, skull. Um, frontal lobe does solve problem, so problem solving, emotional traits, reasoning and judgment, speaking, voluntary uh, motor activities. Um, it's very important the function of the frontal lobe as they are on the other lobes, but I want to concentrate on that one because there is a study that I did together. I gathered some information for my doctoral dissertation about what happens when you have high stress levels, what happened with your function of the frontal lobe. And this is, this is a, 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 a PET scan that they did and the this is a healthy frontal lobe. This is a frontal lobe under a lot of stress. You see how the blood supply gets reduced when we have high stress. So that means that our ability to make decisions, and I'm gonna just tell you, when you are under stress, you get the appetite for junk food, right? Right? Yeah. That's because you are, and then you, Technically, go and do it without thinking, even though you might get a thought, ah, it's going to affect me. Ah, I'm going to eat it anyway. I need to have some pleasure once in a while. That is not coming from the frontal lobe talking to you. That's coming from the center of your brain, and we'll talk about that. The stress hormones set from the middle, from the pituitary, pituitary gland, and other glands that are in the center of the, of the brain, and they spread to the brain and makes you go into a depressed state of mind, including your ability to make the right decisions. When Christ was attacked by the enemy, he was attacked directly in the desert after fasting for 40 days among all the other attacks. And it has to do with the fact that Christ was going to a starvation mode. And he actually reacted to the devil uh, by, by the power of the word of God. He wasn't because he was, he was human as we are, but he was in a starvation mode. The devil will try and, and our decisions will be faulty if we make decisions when we are not well fed or we are under a lot of stress. Um, people, uh, by the way, 
fasting is not bad. It uh, sometimes is good. We need to do it in the right time, and we need, we, be, we need to be in the physical condition that will allow us to, to fast. And fasting can be the different ways. You can fast fruits, only uh, water. You can get some uh, broth. You can fast different ways just to, to uh, do it the right way. Consult your physician when you try to go into a fast. Um, so, so stress affects our brain more than we think. Okay? Medication affects your brain. Of course. If you are depressed and you take medication, be sure that the medication is working. Because people will take medication for depression and to treat depression you need to have multiple approaches you only you don't only go with medication you you go with psychotherapy or talk therapy uh, behavioral therapy whatever you want to call it biblical therapy and then you have to take diet into consideration you know uh, you need to exercise. It's very important that you are able to move and to do, stay busy. Get your mind in whole and good stuff because as soon as you stop, depression is coming back. Yes. Any? Okay. Um, the stress response. The large number of cortisol receptors are related to re uh, the the. the the dendrites will shrink. Do you know what the dendrites are? They're this. They connect you. They don't touch. We have chemical transmission between these little hairs here. The dendrites. This is the body of the cell. This is, this is the axon. And these are no more dendrites. Uh, and uh, when you have high stress, they shrink. The transmission is delay. Okay? And you don't get the same response in your body. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. But this, these are the, this, this, this is the neuron. This is the cell. We have millions of this in our body. And we used to think that once they died, they did not reproduce. What is happening is, if you have a path, they die in the process. The other path that are the bypasses get trained to do the job of the area that die. And you can rehab. Okay? Sometimes. So uh, I, I'm saying this because have you been depressed and people say, I just feel sluggish and slow. That's it. You have defer is the firing is slow it's go not because the firing is is is, is uh, s slow is because the distance between dendrites is is, is is they're more apart because the dendrites tend to shrink do they do they go back to their normal yes yes our body has the ability to recoup but we had to give them the opportunity. And we need to stop and recoup. Okay? Uh, when we don't, it talks about meditation, but the same thing happens when you pray. Uh, the, the function and the activities of the frontal lobe are better. Uh, when we just don't live our life full of the stuff that we have and we don't stop to pray. I will not use the word meditation, but that's what it was in this in the slides. Uh, it will help you to, to, um, to think clear, to connect. By the way, that's why it's so important to pray. One of the reasons behind communicating with God is important to pray because, and, 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 and please, most people, and I say most people, but a lot of people, 
will say, okay, I'm going to pray. And they sit down, close their eyes, and they think about their payments. They think about all the things that they had to do that day. Uh, have, you, have you gone through that? Did you close your eyes to pray and then you go around the world in 30 days? You know, and then you go like, ah, I'm praying, Lord, help me. And uh, it's very important that we uh, take, don't fight your thoughts, get it out of the way, and move on. So 15 minutes of prayer is not enough. You need to take time to get into the spirit of prayer and, and to be transported. From here to God, it takes time. It does, doesn't happen because you sit down and you close your eyes and you say, dear God, and then say, whoops, and then you go to, to everywhere uh, because that happened to a lot of people. My mom sometimes called me in the morning uh, a long time ago. She, she, I, I call her now because she has Alzheimer's, but before she used to call me and say, I fell asleep last night when I was kneeling down praying. And they say, are you okay, Mom? Yeah. I woke up at 2 o'clock on my knees. That was the longest prayer I did. I've done. Uh, prayer, prayer, meditation is therapy for the, for the brain. I'm not, I'm not talking now as a pastor. I'm talking uh, as, a, as a, thera a therapist or, or a, a scientist. Uh, there are plenty of documentation of people that have been blessed by the, by the ministry of meditation. By the way, meditation in the mind of many Christians sounds more like, like Eastern religion, but meditation can happen also in a Christian mode. Okay? So don't go into the Western, uh, Eastern religions when I talk about meditation. Be, yes. No, you need to prepare your mind. You don't, you don't enter into prayer like people. Do you know we pray like two, not even a minute sometimes at the church here? When you are having your private prayer and your brain goes everywhere, you need to land it. So instead of fighting your brain, let it flow. Talk about the God, about those things that you're thinking. And then you get into the intimacy with God. You know, we try to communicate with God the same way we communicate with each other many times. And it's not doing the relaxation part. The scientific part that I'm talking about is that it helps your frontal lobe to get more uh, blood. And you got better flow while you are in meditation. And you are relaxed. Okay? And if we find the joy of relaxation in meditation and prayer, we will do more. Because it's pleasant. It's good. You'll do more. You talk to God more. Okay. Again, this is uh, the color brain. And um, I'm going to be talking about the frontal lobe. Uh, most of the communication that occur in the brain uh, occurs between the, the, this area that they refer information to the frontal lobe for approval. And this is funny because you will say, I want to eat an ice cream at midnight, and, he has to, and you dream about it, and the frontal lobe tells you, okay, you want the ice cream, but this is not the time. And I'm talking about ice cream because that's probably one of the things that we most of the time uh, think without talking about other things. The king of the whole brain is who? Who? The frontal lobe. Okay. When we have a lot of stress, in this division, he, ah, and this division here creates a callosity. 
created by the hormone stress hormones and create a division between the the rest of the brain and the frontal lobe and the prefrontal lobe okay what happened is then we have we end up with the brain that is run by the subject not by the keen so we end up with a coup d'etat in the brain the this part is running our way of moving we are moved by animal desires not by uh, by reason thank you okay that is very important for us to understand that's what God wants us to take care of our brains because he, there is when we make the decision for the rest of the body okay I said people say I don't know how you do that I cannot get up to do exercise yeah but you have to go to bed early yes but I cannot go to bed early why oh, have you seen the program in TV that is around 10 o'clock and I said, how important is for you to watch it? Well, it's not really important. They tell me it's not really important, but they cannot stop watching it. Uh, we need to understand that artificial lights and all that affects our brain functions. You know? So this is part of, of that. Uh, when I was doing the research, I found that one of my professors was uh, Professor Samponsky, and he did a study uh, on baboons. And he, he's, he's from UCLA. And he studied that baboons uh, are very, f they like to fight. And there was a group of baboons who got into a, a, a garbage pile from a restaurant and they start poisoning themselves and they start dying. Only left, all the dominant baboons die. Only left the females and the less dominant. So the whole gang, the clan, became, or be, was basically females and less aggressive baboons. The aggress less aggressive baboons were not fighters, they were not responsive. And they became the head of the, of, the, of the clan. And the clan start getting less aggressive. And they start commuting with each other. And instead of punishing people, or punishing other baboons, that's what I mean. And they, and they start uh, accepting other baboons that came to their gang but they will train them in pacific pacificity. So they have to be passive. They train them not to be so stress, uh, or, or stress motivated by, by, by scales, by uh, wanting to be the boss. They start having more of a communal life. Okay? Next week, I'm going to start introducing sections of the movie that he created with National Geographic, and you're going to see the baboon fights and how they modify and because of the aggressive members of the group leaving the group became more passive and that pass that happens not only in baboon groups it happened in social structures guided by men when the people who are aggressive leave and the people in the in, in the group stay they are more together the group become more cohesive and whoever comes, the people in the group will modify, say, nope, nope, that's not the way you do it, nope, we work together, nope. Till they integrate into the group by learning uh, communal living, communal living, okay? Uh, this is very important because most people 
are living their life like Gage, the one that we saw at the beginning, because they have a chemical lobotomy. It's like chemically they have callosity created by the stress, and this is taken apart. They don't communicate. This part of the brain don't communicate with the, this part of the brain. And they are always being motivated by desire. I cannot stop eating. I can do this. I want to do this because I feel, and it's always like I have to do what I feel like doing. I don't have any control. And my locus of control is not anymore in my principles, it's in my desires. And it has to do with the way this, is, this works. This works. And people who are going through high stress, that's what they do. When people start reducing their stress, they start losing weight. They, start, they stop smoking. They do other things that they start drinking. They stop drinking. Because now they have, a, they have the keen helping them to manipulate the way the, the, the rest of the brain works. The frontal lobe will give them the information, the data that the rest of the brain needs to function. Yes. Uh, the cajosities that I'm talking about are actually things that you can measure. The cajosities are hardening of the pathways of the uh, neurons, and sometimes the damage is permanent. Uh, especially people who have been uh, abused, 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 uh, because they produce too much of the cortisol and too much of the epinephrine and they produce and they have learned to kept it in sight and I will damage your ability to process and it can become a permanent damage yes yes yeah oh yeah yeah um, one of the biggest and most difficult mental illness to treat is personality disorders. Yeah, people, the personality disorders are dysfunctions of your, the way you project yourself. And most of the problem with personality disorders are that you can actually, if you talk to the people who have personality disorders, they're always right. You are always wrong. And they don't say, let me learn. They say, you change and we'll be happy. And that's one of the manifestations. Okay? That's one of the manifestations. And there are a center in Portland that treats, you know how they treat personality disorder? You have to go for a year every single day of the week to group therapy to, to therapists separate two or three days during the three, uh, two or three hours during the day for a whole year before they release you into the community uh, because it's so difficult to break it. Yeah, oh yeah, there's some people, but uh, typically they come back because they have found that they can manipulate the environment better with their personality problem because they're they are about manipulation they manipulate okay partial disconnection between the keen and the subjects a coup d'etat that's what we were talking about that's what happened with the, uh, the hypothalamus not only uh, controls the appetite but regulates sex regulate desires and people who are not functioning with the frontal lobe, this is what regulates the, their, their, this, their, their brain. They are regulated by the hypothalamus. So they are using the animal brain. 
Yeah. Well, most most of those people have lived a very stressful life, and they do have with damage. They come with damage uh, relationship from childhood, uh, and drugs, and they get into a lot of damaging situations that will impair. I mean, you hear some of the the the, the, the answers they give, and they don't make sense with common dignity and common behavioral humans because they are working with the animal brain. It's the, the guy that will kill somebody just to see the blood. Okay? Uh, and those are people. In, in a lesser scale, people who are in, on their high stress for a long time, they go through the same thing. And that's the problem. When you, you come to a church or a moral conversation, you are not listening with the frontal lobe because you are the whole week you are on the high stress you sit down and some people just say pastor I'm sorry I slept through the whole sermon and I said probably you needed it but they don't listen they can leave the church go home and they probably can repeat what it was said but never understand the impact on the death of what it was said. That's what is so important, what you eat and how you live during the week so you can actually worship God on the Sabbath. Okay? Hypothalamus controls appetite, metabolism. It's right here. Right here. That little tip there with the pituitary gland is there. It's right there. And once... Uh, re one, they control the appetites and all the other stuff. And this one, the pituitary glands, is the hormonal control. And this is the brain stem. I have my stroke in this area, in the pons. I had a pond stroke. Yeah, so. Well, we need to go out in nature. We need to experience relaxation. Uh, we are the only, one of the only cultures besides Europe. Europe is more or less a fair, but we are very, uh, we don't like the idea of slowing down. For us, slowing down is like a weakness. You know, I had a, I had a, a, a co-worker uh, that he said, Five o'clock. Bye, people. And I was still on the computer. That's when I was working in uh, Adventist. And I say, hey, Ray. And you have him here, Ray Ammon. And I said, Ray, why you leave always at five o'clock? And you are here. I say, brother, I have a life. And this is just a section of my life. I don't live to work here. I work here so I can live. That's it. And I learned from him that I had to take breaks. That I had to take breaks. And in the hospitals and the most places where you work, every five hours they give you ten minutes. That's how it works. But most people don't take it. Some people get involved and don't take it. They just keep working and working and working and working and working and working. And then we wonder why I'm fighting with myself and my brain and everything is because we have not learned God's way of living. Remember, God made one day at, in the creation, one cent, two, three days, six days. He made seven, but I'm going to go with the six. After he finished the first day, What came first, the night or the day? We start the day by sleeping. When this is the new day, 
And if we turn all the lights off, our body is going to say melatonin, it's going to start releasing sleeping hormones, it starts getting you ready to crash. But because of that, our body reacts different. And we sleep, we rest before we start working. The way we think is, I work and then I rest. That's not the way God prepare us. God said, you rest first, and then you work. That's what Friday night, we start with Sabbath. That's the only way, the, the day that we think about it. But it happens all the days. We're not meeting here on Thursday night. We are getting out of here on Friday morning. Friday night, because the night comes first. And then when we sleep, we get ready for Friday. And it's important for us to understand that because God is investing in us time to rest. And he gave us 24 hours to rest. From Friday night to Saturday night. To be with him, with the family of the church, and with God. And when we break that as a society, we pay for it. We pay for it. And let me tell you, I have, oh, probably two, sh two shelves of books of scientists and religious people that have found out that even if you don't give the value to the Sabbath day, if you don't give the value to the rest of the week, it's needed to be done the way it's intended because of our circadian rhythms, our rhythms are responding to those days, those, those cycles. Okay? I am going in May, next month, to our retreat. It takes me one and a half to two days to get into the rhythm of sleeping, getting up, walking, and doing things because we are not used to that. You know, we turn, you know what is the recommended is that we turn, at, when the sun gets down, we turn all the highlights and keep the lamps. Because they're not affecting our, our, the light is not affecting our eyes, our brain. Because your eyes are an extension of your brain. And then we start, our, our metabolism starts slowing down. And melatonin starts being produced. So you don't have to watch Tucker Carlson, you don't have to watch all the other people. You know, you just, and you get into the mood. Yes. Yeah. Well, we can use lights there because fresh lights are difficult. But lower, just kind of. I, I, when I when I get home, I, I start going. I turn all the lights that are higher in their ceiling, and I leave the lamps. Because the lamps don't hit you in the face, just give you an, uh, down to the ground. And that gets my brain. I sit. I sit. When I get home, I take a shower. I sit in my recliner, and I lower the lights, and then I start reading. It gets, and you can feel your body. Then I have a, a cushion. I throw it in the ground. I kneel down, I thank God for the day, talk to him a little bit, because if I don't want to fall asleep while I'm talking to him, that's disrespectful. So I, I pray, and then my wife by that time is in the shower, and then I go and sleep. And I turn the lights completely off. Uh, because the brain works, needs the night rest and the, 
in, in, the, in the rams. And we can talk about rams and restoration of the brain and how all that is affected by the way we spend the, the, the sleep is more is really 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 important for our restoration of the body and most people don't get good quality sleep in the first half of the night they don't have the, the, the rems people say oh I just caught my sleep but it was like five o'clock in the morning they don't really feel good well you probably didn't have enough wrong way to take off and to land for your sleep yeah the rams you know the rams need to happen in the first part of the of the, of the before midnight half of midnight and then half in the first hour so so any questions i passed my time any questions next week we are just going to talk about i haven't really talked about what to do and how to live we're going to do that next week. Next week, the whole conversation is what, how, change, how we can change our lives so we can manage better uh, our, our reaction to the outside world, which is the stress. Let's bow our heads. Thank you for allowing us to share this time together. And may your spirit continue guiding us in this journey. Thank you for what you do in our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to be talking also about uh, uh, energy, our energy. We have energy that we, we can burn as we are facing. We are not going to live through life without having issues like that. But if we burn all the vital energy that we carry, we don't have a, a vital energy to face life when we need it. So we need to keep, we need to build good vital energy reserve. So when we're challenged, we have something to respond with. Have a good night. Thank you. And bye to the people at home.